Um, the uh, final speaker for this segment today is Sister Fariha Shakil. Uh, Sister Fariha served as the national president of Ekna Sisters Wing for two terms. She holds a degree in Bachelor of Arts and is currently studying early childhood education. She has a passion for Dawa and is currently the regional director of Gain Peace Sisters, as well as, a, as, well as an integral part of the Y Islam Ikna Sisters team. She is a mother of five children, mashallah, and currently lives in Chicago. Sister Fariha, welcome. Your uh, topic today is from hating Muhammad Sallallahu to becoming the most beloved. Sister Fariha. Sure. Jazakallah um, khair. Um, brother, can you see my screen? Yes, we can. Okay. Okay. Jazakallah khair. A'udhu billahi minash shaitan ar-rajim. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim warahmatullahi wabarakatuhu to all um, respected brothers and sisters. Uh, Alhamdulillah, feeling humbled and honored to be a part of this um, wonderful program, uh, our CIRA conference today. Um, Insha'Allah. So the topic for me today for my talk is from hating Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to becoming the most beloved and um, subhanallah talking um, you know while listening to all such wonderful speakers and learned um, and honorable scholars um, I feel myself as not worthy to speak on a topic like this but inshallah um, I will take this as an opportunity to revive um, our faith and our love so my dear beloved sisters and respected brothers, what do we hear today um, nowadays in, you know, news, in media? This world looks like this, right? The world today looks like this. Hatred, discriminations, insults, violent attacks. This is what many Muslims are facing, uh, particularly uh, the Muslims in the Western world. We see these kind of incidents happening every now and then, um, sometimes in France, um, the other time in Holland, sometimes in Netherlands, with different names, with different titles. But um, we call all of these acts as senseless acts of provocating Muslims and igniting um, anger and frustration um, you know, within this uh, big, huge community of Muslim Ummah. Um, and the other side, we do see responses coming from the Muslim world, right? We do see Muslims protesting, um, showing strong reactions, and even showing hatred sometimes um, towards these acts um, of dishonoring and ridiculing a Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then we get confused, and then we start thinking um, as a follower and as an ummati of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that what is right and what is wrong. How we should be responding to such incidents? Should I just, you know, sit and send durood and salam on my Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam? Should I stand up and just protest? So let's let's talk about what actually hate is. I mean, this is not, you know, anything new which I'll be talking about, but just let, let you know, let's ponder on what hate actually is. So hate sometimes is a byproduct of um, fear. Um, fear of known, sometimes fear of unknown. Hate could result in the form of um, uh, ignorance. Sometimes uh, hate is there, and especially in these kind of incidents, sometimes it's there just because uh, people don't want to accept Islam as a religion, um, or they don't want to accept the truth, um, even though they know about it. Sometimes uh, the hate takes place in the hearts um, to satisfy um, one's ego or to gain any social status or political benefits or to just to gain media attention. But on the other hand, on the other hand, there are many who would, you know, hate, dislike Islam or hate Muslims or show disrespect to our beloved Rasul wasallam, due to ignorance simply because of lack of information or lack of knowledge or even more than that, maybe they know things about Islam and Muslims, but it might be due to um, being misinformed or due to the fear-mongering tactics by others. 
but they still have that fitra, that clean and pure nature within themselves, that the soft spot which would make them, you know, thirsty and eager to search for the truth, for the truth, um, for the true message of Islam, they still have that soft spot within themselves. And just as I uh, mentioned, you know, this kind of hate or dislike or these emotions rising in someone's heart who actually is not in conflict with Islam, but simply they just don't know um, any good about it. I would just like to share two examples with all of you today. And these two names might not be unfamiliar to you. Um, some of you might not know these two people, but I just picked these two examples to share with you all that, um, you know, from, from, this, from this world, from our time, um, the first one is Arnoud van Doorn. Um, he is a Dutch, he was a Dutch politician. Uh, and these actually, these two, both these examples are from, you know, from our current times, from, from this decade. I would say that I think this, um, uh, this whole incident of Arnoud van Doorn, um, it caught media's attention in around like 2013 or 2015. Um, and then um, we know that he was a um, part of a Dutch Freedom Party, which was a, an anti-Islam movement. Um, he was also very actively involved in the publicity and in the marketing of an anti-Islam film called Fitna. Uh, it was just, I mean, very brief and um, short timed film, just 15 to 20 minutes. But uh, in this film, Islam was posed as a threat um, to the world and insults were made to Rasulullah So after this film was re released, um, uh, as expected, Muslim world showed strong reactions, um, you know, ab about the contents of this film. So Van Doorn was one of the, you know, most important names in terms of, you know, doing the publicity and doing the marketing for this film. And um, so um, looking at this strong reaction of Muslim world, he said himself in, in his interviews that he was astonished. He was amazed. And he said that he... He doubted his work the very first time in his life. He doubted his um, mentality or his ideology about Islam first time in his life. And then he thought that there is something wrong in his work or the way he's thinking. And subhanAllah, that made him, you know, go, uh, that made him um, visit one of the mosques, um, one of the masjid in his um, local area. And then he went there and he asked for a copy of Quran translation he asked for a sira book specifically and then um he just said that he couldn't sleep that night after starting uh he after he started reading the quran and the sira and then he went back again the very next day and then he kept on going and going and you know just spending time for hours um with the with the people who were in the masjid asking them questions about islam and finally subhanallah in 2013 he uh, proclaimed the shahada he became muslim so just imagine coming from that extreme of, uh, of uh, being a hater of Islam or, you know, being a part of, a, of an anti-Islam movement to coming to this point. Um, and if you hear his, you know, interviews um, and or listen to him when he's talking on media, the way he would defend Islam, the way he would uh, defend Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that's amazing. That's, that's amazing. That's definitely, I mean, we all can learn from. And then um, the other example, uh, Richard McKinney, he was invited as one of the guest speakers for this year's Gain Pieces fundraiser in Chicago. And subhanAllah, listening to his story as well, I mean, it just, you know, um, in, uh, in, you know it, it just increases our faith and our um, love for Rasulullah and for Islam. He was a former U.S. Marine um, who plotted to actually dismantle an Islamic center in Indiana. And um, so long story short, he had a you know, heated conversation with his second grade daughter uh, who was talking to her dad about, about you know, he was, who, his daughter was talking to him about one of her Muslim classmates whose mother visited her classroom and who was in full hijab and full niqab. So when she was ta telling her father um, that, you know, one of my classmates' mom came and she was wearing like this and innocently she was telling all about it. And then hearing this, Richard, I mean, he started spewing all the hatred, all the negativity about, you know, for Muslims and Islam, which was in his heart. And then, but then 
the very next moment he looked at his daughter's face the looks on her face were like like she was not believing that this is my dad who has so much hatred in his heart and then that was the moment for him to you know just ponder and think that why, why is it so and then he thought to give a last chance before fulfilling his plans and before dismantling the masjid he went he, he went to the same masjid which he planned to blow up and he 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 says in his interview that when he entered the masjid the person sitting there he the, the other muslim person he was just finishing his wudu and then you know he looked at him and you know smiled at him um you know welcomed him in the masjid and asked him what do you want brother and subhanallah you know he again i mean the same thing happened that he asked for a copy of quran and he said that i want to know about more about islam and muslims and then subhanallah um i think in 2010 he also accepted islam um and subhanallah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opened up his heart so i mean sharing these examples for us to i mean i'll i'll be sharing a lot of more examples from sira as well today but we need to just re- keep thinking about these incidents just reflect uh on on these um incidents and think about our, we need to think about ourselves that what would i have done if i was in this situation what would i have done if i knew a person who is like arnud van duren and you know who is a famous politician and i if i would know that you know he is one of the islamophobe or the haters of islam and then if i'll see him or anybody else entering into my masjid how would i welcome that person what facial expressions would i have on my face how much sincerity would i have in my heart to help that person uh, to answer that person's questions right so this is nothing new same things um, and same incidents happened during the time of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam we know all the sira and all the you know we have read so many books about the sira of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam but then there were islamophobes who didn't have anything in their heart except for hate and we know some of the names abu lahab abu jahal walid bin mughaira i mean so interesting things when um, i mean i i often laugh and i read about walid bin mughaira that pe- they, they all would gather together and they would plan that okay let's start calling muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam a liar and then walid bin Mugh- bin mughaira would be the one who would say that you know no 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 his his kalam um or his talk is not of a liar he's not a liar he, he we we saw him growing up within our own community we can't call him a liar and then they would say that okay let's call him a poet or maybe a magician and then walid bin mughaira would say that no we cannot call him a magician magicians are totally different kind of people he sallallahu alaihi wasallam is not one of them so they knew that he whatever he is presenting is true they knew he was truthful they knew he is honest but then they continued to reject it but then uh we also know that there were many other people who would still have that ability to listen to ponder to think about the message of islam when rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam presented it to them um uh, but more than their softness of heart for islam the kindness of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam played the most important part in their reversion to islam and many examples we can see from um from history of islam rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam's uh, response towards abu sufyan um radiyallahu an towards ikrama ibn abu jahal i mean just reading these names uh, abu jahal's son abu jahal who was the staunchest of all enemies of islam even abu sufyan we know that um the way abu sufyan you know fought not just as a soldier um among the disbelievers but as the leader for all the disbelievers he was one of those who would lead um the army of kuffar in all major battles the battle of badr the battle of ahad uh, the battle of trench um during sulay hudaybia so we, we we know these names from from all those in, incidents um which were kind of you know uh, standing in front of islam uh, as one of the you know enemies but then subhanallah um uh, we know what happened on the day of conquest of makka um saad bin ubadah radiyallahu an he saw abu sufyan when you know the when the muslims entered makka and he saw abu sufyan and he uh, as saad uh, warned abu sufyan that abu sufyan be a uh, warned now you are going to have you know consequences for what you did and abu sufyan rushed to rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he asked that oh rasulullah 
tell, tell me that you're not going to revenge us. Tell me that you're not going to punish us. And Prophet Muhammad Sallam smiled at him and told Abu Sufyan that Abu Sufyan, today is the day of excellence. Today is the day of Ihsan. And not only that, but Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam uh, declared and announced that whoever would enter the house of Abu Sufyan, radiallahu an, they, they would be given peace. They would be given peace. And the same kind of story happened to Ikrama bin Abu Jahal. He left Makkah when he knew when he came to know that Rasulullah Sallallahu entered Makkah along with all the Muslims. And then he was so scared he 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 just left Makkah and he ran away. And then later on, I mean, it's a long story, but you know, his wife went to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and asked for forgiveness for her husband. And then finally, Ikrama was uh, brought back to Makkah. And then, Subhanallah, the way you know, I mean, the way they took a U-turn after becoming Muslim. And then we know Ikrama bin Abu Jahal radiallahu an, um, as a martyr of Islam, as a shaheed during the battle of Yarmouk, he passed away. When he was entering, actually, when he was entering, um, entering the battlefield, uh, of the very, very tough area of battlefield. And uh, Hazrat Khalid bin Walid warned him that Ikrama, do not go there. Muslim army need you. Uh, you might not come back from there, from, from that area where you were going. But Ikrama said, radiallahu anh, that um, the way I opposed Rasulullah sallallahu and the way I stood up against him for all the battles in my life, I have to um, undo it. And uh, even if I have to sacrifice my life, I'll do that. Subhanallah. And the, you know, stories of Hinda and Vahshi, uh, I mean, all of these became the companions. I mean, Hinda, radiallahu anha, um, when uh, she became Muslim after Fatah Makkah, and then what she said, she said exactly the title of this program. She said to Rasulullah very boldly that um, you were the most hated person. You were the most hated person for me. But now you are the most honorable and beloved um, prophet of Allah. And you have that, that place in my heart, which nobody else has. So what, what was bringing this change? Just keep pondering on these, um, you know, um, I mean, in, in our mind, we need to th keep thinking about it. What brought this change in these people's life? Giving the, uh, also the, the story of the keys of Kaaba when Rasulullah conquered Makkah, Hazrat Ali came to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and saying, and he was holding the keys of Kaaba. And he said that, shouldn't these keys belong to us, Rasulullah? Isn't this honor for us now? And Prophet Muhammad Sallam said, call Uthman bin Talha. And who was Uthman bin Talha? He was the key keeper, the key holder for Kaaba, um, you know, since the beginning. And he was one of the very strong enemies of Prophet Muhammad Sallam himself. He was the one of the persons who would just openly, um, you know, say, um, you know, bad things about Rasulullah Sallam, even on his face. But Rasulullah Sallallahu said that no call Uthman bin Talha. He was the original key holder. And uh, he told to Ali radiallahu an that, oh Ali, this is the day of Ihsan. This is the day of forgiveness. And then another, I mean, I would not talk about the story of Fudayla bin Umar. Um, our next um, speaker, inshallah, Sister Hina, would talk about this beautiful story as well. But every single story, every single incident of Prophet Muhammad Wasallam's life, where he encountered these people who were hating him the most, but then showing the love, showing the compassion, showing the best of all the ikhlaq, we can see that how these people were turned into such honorable people that we are we are adding in front of their names radiallahu an may allah be pleased with them we are adding we have to add uh, this title in front of their names that may allah be pleased with them and then the most beautiful story of all the stories that you know the person who we knew um the, the first time we you know we, we know this person, uh, Hazrat Umar radiallahu an, that raising his sword and searching for Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and beating up his sister and, um, um, and then, you know, searching for him that where is, where is he and I want to kill him. That hate, that much ignorance. And then coming to fast forward, coming to this scenario where Prophet sallam is asking Hazrat Umar that, Omar, do you love me more than your wealth? Do you love me more than your family? And Umar radiallahu an is replying, yes, ya Rasulullah, yes, ya Rasulullah. And when Rasulullah sallam asked, do you love me more than yourself? And Prophet Umar replied, no, O Prophet of Allah. Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa said, O Umar, your faith will never be complete until you love me more than yourself. And then Hazrat Umar 
took a moment of silence and then he you know secluded herself from others and thought about it and then very soon he returned and he stood in the center of the masjid and proclaimed, O Prophet of Allah, now I love you more than myself. The Prophet replied, now, O Omar, now, O Omar, meaning that now you have perfected your faith. SubhanAllah, just compare ourselves, compare our love, compare our faith and our iman in Rasulullah with these blessed companions. And even them are, you know, I mean, coming from that background and then ending up sacrificing their lives for Islam, for Allah and for Rasul's love and for their honor. My respected brothers and my beloved sisters in Islam, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was the embodiment of this Hadith Qudsi and he would he would occasionally say, read this hadith to his companions. Um, and this beautiful hadith, uh, it says, Inna rahmati sabaqat ghadabi. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when, when Allah finished his creation, he wrote over his throne that my mercy will overcome my anger. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was equally honored and respected by his enemies. Even though who didn't uh, believe in him, even though who didn't say, Ashadu wa la ilaha illallah wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasulu, still those people honored him. Just, just, just think about that night when Prophet Muhammad sallallahu is supposed to migrate from Mecca to Medina. People are surrounding his, surrounding his house holding swords in their hand to planning to kill Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But then at the same time, they knew that Prophet Muhammad had their all the important belongings and their amana because they all knew that he is that truthful and that trustworthy and that honest that he is the most eligible person to take care of their trusts and amana. Just, just look at this contrast. And we know what kind of personality Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had, what kind, of, what kind of attitude he showed towards them. And this beautiful ayat of Quran, chapter 41, verse number 34, um, return evil with good. Return evil with good. And it's not just the theory of Islam, it's not just the concept of Islam, but it's also... I mean, that was exactly the way Rasulullah lived his life. And we need to be the game changer. We need to be the game changer. We need to be the part. Let's, let's talk about some of the tips which we all can do or we all can make some improvements for. Be a part of the conversation. When we talk to our fellow Americans, when we talk to any person who's showing hatred towards Islam or towards, you know, some kind of resentment towards Rasulullah wasallam, just listen to them. Be a part of the conversation. Just we don't become the conversation. Don't overpower the conversation. We can shove down a lot of information, um, you know, um, through their throats if they just give it bit by bit. And, um, you know, ask them what are they looking for? Ask them where they are confused. Um, we need to understand where this hate is coming from. We need to understand that, you know, this media, um, and all these fear mongering tactics and, you know, politics and, um, you know, I mean, is there, it is, is it their fault or are they just brainwashed or are they just simply looking at their TV screen and learning and listening about Islam from all the other sources, except for the most authentic sources, which are Muslims and Quran and Sunnah itself. We need to have empathy. I mean, we say these um, statements quite often, but we, but we need to keep thinking about it, that we need to be in their shoes and just, just try to understand why they are, you know, getting away from it. And inshallah, inshallah, the more and more we will understand the um, hikmah and the strategy of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the more we will be able to connect to or, you know, with our neighbors, with my kids' teachers, with my doctor and physicians, with anyone who we interact with. So some quick tips, um, carry, you know, whatever material we can in our cars, in, um, you know, in our vehicles all the time. Um, one minute cards are my favorite, um, very small, you know, very small cards to be easily, it, it could just simply be put in uh, your pockets, in your purses. 
um, carry on some informative, informative brochures by Gain Peace and Why Islam. We know that, mashallah, we have a lot of resources. We need to share the seerah. We need to share the beautiful stories of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with all. Um, having billboards about his noble character. Um, you know, we have seen many cities have put up billboards um, about Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We just need to keep, continue doing all of it. But, but most importantly, uh, and the, 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 I think the, the thing which is going to change the situation, the today's world, which is going to bring in more khair and more softness in other people's heart, is to carry the legacy and the character of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, to show everybody that we are the true followers of him, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. We need to show the world that you know we believe in him and we would follow him in his footsteps of showing rahma and mercy and forgiveness for all. May Allah subhanahu wa taala um, uh, accept whatever you know we have learned, we have heard, we have said today, and make it um, as a hujja for all of us on the Day of Judgment um, right. as our, and counted as our love for Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullah. Jazakallah khair, Sister Fadiya, for a, a very beautiful presentation. Uh, very good examples of uh, the seerah uh, 